Yes, sir! What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK of the People's Champ, coming to you live with the uh, NBA update for the day, man. We got a lot to get to and a little time to do it. I'm going to try to cut this thing down and try to get it around about five to seven minutes or something like that. So uh, without further ado, let's just get right to it. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. I bet you everything will turn out lovely. lovely. First off, Kevin Durant, man. Kevin Durant is going to opt out of his contract, but while he's going to opt out, they did make it absolutely clear that he will be re-signing with the Warriors for next season. Uh, the gist of the article really just says that he's going to re-sign with the Warriors and going to take a short-term, team-friendly contract. He's giving them that Tom Brady treatment, man. You know, where he, where he may have a running back or something that he wants to keep there so he'll restructure his contract or what have you. So this is more or less what he's doing right here. Uh, it says they want to keep Andre Iguodala in the fold. He's probably going to retire a warrior. And uh, even though he has bird rights and uh, he can just, they can't exceed the salary cap to resign Andre Iguodala, I guess they just want to keep everything intact. I think it's more because Steph's contract is coming up and I think they just want, want to make everything line up properly. Steph is only making like 12 million a year, maybe 13 this year, something like that. He's the lowest paid player of the big three, obviously. Even Draymond makes more than him. So I think that they just want to make sure that they're going to have everything lined up and all that ducks in a row when it's time to come pay the piper when you have to pay Steph. But I mean, 20 million is nothing to sneeze at. And then we know that other teams in the league can pay him more money, but it really doesn't matter. He's not going anywhere, uh, especially after this year. You know, I think they're just going to keep that team together and they're going to do everything that they can in order to do that. And uh, this is just one of the one of the first steps. And maybe he's trying to rehabilitate his image a little bit, too. I don't know if that's what it is. It's like, hey, I am a nice guy. I am a team guy. And uh, this is what I do. Guess we just got to wait and see what you guys think. Just give me a minute. I'm a B.I. Just trust me. Trust me. All right, next up, we got Paul George to the Dubs, the Cavs, or the Blazers. Inside Pacers, wild negotiations for Paul George. So more or less, they have made it very plain. We talked about this the other day. Paul George, while he is committed to the Pacers this season, he has made it absolutely plain that he will not return to the Pacers beyond this season. So with that being the case, I'm believing that the Pacers are doing this because they want to get something for him, and they probably don't want to drag this out into the season and 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 have it be a distraction. If you're going to lose a player, just go ahead and lose a player, start playing damage control as quickly as possible, and let's just move on. The thing is, where do you think he's going to go? We know he's going to leave. We don't know if he's going to leave this season. Um, now, they say that the Lakers are not a player in this, but at the same time, uh, obviously, the best teams, they say they, they say that the Lakers are not a player in this, but the Cavs and the Warriors, oh, I couldn't see him going to the Warriors. I just don't think they can make the money work. Maybe if they lost Clay or traded Clay or something like that, that could work. But um, I, I, I just don't see that happening. Now, they still say that they tried to create a bidding war be between the Cavs and the Pacers by letting them know that each one was interested. But uh, they didn't. They really didn't disclose anything. Now, Portland Trail Blazers and also the Denver Nuggets are interested. And those are two young teams on the rise that may, that may want his services they're buying for his services but to be honest he's not going there if he were to go anywhere he's going to go somewhere where he's going to not only win but where he has a chance to win a championship in my mind and the only place that he can really do that if he's not going to san antonio and they haven't even made any mention of san antonio so i mean the only place that that really makes sense would be cleveland now like I said, they say the Golden State Warriors, and the only way I can see that happening would be, again, if they were to trade Clay. But I just don't see them trading Clay. So um, it's probably 99 times out of 10 it's going to be the Cleveland Cavaliers. Maybe they get rid of K-Love or something like that and, and, and add something else to it. I don't know how they would have to do it to make all the money work. I'll tell you this. I would be very surprised if we saw Paul George in the Indiana Pacers uniform by the middle of this season. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. I bet you everything will turn out lovely. lovely. And last up, man, we got NBA trade rumors. Nick's not ruling out trading Chris Porzing God, the Porzing God, before draft night. Why? I just want to get right into it. Why? Why would you trade away your best young player? Why would you even dangle him? I don't understand this. I mean, the team is not really going to go anywhere as constructed, but... In an offseason where you may lose, you may be looking to trade Melo, you might lose Melo, and you may lose other players. I just feel like this is the player, and I don't know, Knicks fans, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the most promising player on the team right now. That just comes immediately to mind, man. I don't watch a lot of Knicks basketball, I'm a Hawks fan, but Porzingis is, 
the most promising player on the team right now. So I don't understand why they would even dangle him or trade him. Are you trying to get Paul George? Is Paul George at this point in his career better than Porzingis? I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, what, what could you get for Porzingis just, just right off the top of your head? Because I can't think of anything. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I'm just saying that right off the top of my head, I cannot think of anything that you could trade for Porzingis other than, like, LeBron or KD that, that's, that's really going to help you, like, right now. You guys let me know. I have no clue. I... I I'm just hoping that we can help share some light on the subject. But then again, it is the Zen Master. He works in mysterious ways. And uh, if anybody has something up their sleeve, he does. Because, hey, they booed Porzingis on draft night. And look at what happened. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. I'm going to be all right. Just trust me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for you guys today. My question for today is, if Paul George does get traded, where do you think he's going to go? Like I said, I've already said that I think he's going to end up in Cleveland by hook or by crook. Uh, GM LeBron is probably going to put his GM hat on and really show those guys how it's done. But I could be completely wrong. I have been wrong before. So you guys let me know down in the comments. Where do you think Paul George is going to end up? And do you think, if if not Cleveland, where do you think he can end up? And if he, and if he does end up in Cleveland, how do you think he's going to go there? Do you think they're going to get rid of Kevin Love? Do you think it's going to be some combination of Kevin Love and Tristan? Do you think it's going to be Tristan and the draft pick? What do you think, man? I'm interested to know. I'm out of here. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Holla!